Creatine is easily the most popular sports su supplement ever devised, and for good reason. Creatine happens to be the most effective sports supplement ever devised. Uh, it works for about 80% of people that use it, and the only people that it doesn't work as well for are people that eat, uh, consume foods, uh, habitually consume foods that are rich in creatine, such as meat and fish. They still get benefit from taking a creatine supplement, but it's not quite as, as great as people that don't eat a lot of those foods. And for that reason, creatine tends to work really well in vegans. Your body produces one gram of creatine a day from the amino acids, lysine, methionine, and arginine. Uh, wait a minute, is it lysine? No, it's not lysine. It's methionine, arginine, and glycine. Methionine, arginine, and glycine. Those are the three amino acids that your body, your liver and kidney enzymes, they convert them into creatine through a series of enzymatic steps. And uh, again, your body produces one gram a day. Studies years ago in the early 90s showed that uh, taking creatine uh, actually increases athletic performance, increases uh, the ability to train more intensely. Uh, they started out with a creatine load, 30 gram, 25 to 30 grams a day, which is five grams uh, taken six times a day. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. I, I talk about all this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. But today I, I want to talk about uh, a study I came across which attracted me uh, because, you know, a lot of people don't take creatine because they claim they get side effects. The common side effects attributed to cre creatine include gastrointestinal problems like bloating, uh, uh, who know, bloating, that kind of stuff. Uh, other people say they get muscle cramps. Some people, they say they get headaches. Uh, you know, these side effects have been studied very carefully over the years in various by various researchers, and what they found that there's always a reason to explain creatine side effects. In some cases, it has to do with not consuming enough water. When you when you have to consume a little extra uh, water when you uh, take a, cre a creatine supplement, especially when you take more than five grams a day, because creatine uh, produces what they call an osmotic effect. It draws water into the gut and also into cells, which is a good thing because when your cells are, the, are hydrated, it's called cell swelling. That means it puts your cells in, in a kind of anabolic state. Cells that are dehydrated are catabolic. People that are sick have dehydrated cells. People that are healthy have hydrated cells. Now, how does all this uh, apply? Uh, oh, right, let me finish the, the, uh, the thought. The point being that these researchers have looked at these side effects and they found most of them are not true. Uh, creatine is literally side effect free, but every so often you get these studies, usually case studies, that means involving one or two people, maybe three people at the most, where they claim that creatine caused some serious effects. Now, the study that I'm going to talk about here, I came across, the title of it is A Case of Pulmonary Thromboembolism Possibly Associated with the Use of Creatine Supplements. Notice the word possibly. There's a good reason they use the word possibly, because you, to, to, to make a definitive statement that creatine causes pulmonary embolisms, you have to show a direct cause and effect. In other words, you also have to show it occurs in not one or two people, but hundreds. In other words, if hundreds of people who took creatine all wound up with, with, uh, with uh, blood clots in their lungs or a pulmonary embolism, you could say, hey, Creatine's dangerous. It, it can cause a pulmonary embolism. But that just doesn't happen. God knows that thousands and thousands of people since the early 90s have taken creatine, including myself, and none of them have gotten pulmonary embolisms or any other kind of clotting problem. But in this study, this was published in a journal. What's the name of it? Uh, where is it? Jeez, it doesn't even have a name. Oh, it's called uh, Respirology Case Reports. In other words, this is a journal that specializes in case studies. And this case study involved a, uh, this, this was a 24-year-old non-smoking man who presented to the emergency department with sudden onset dyspnea, means trouble breathing. One of the signs of a pulmonary embolism is you have trouble breathing because, remember, the clot is obstructing the lungs. And you also you have chest discomfort. When you have a clot in your lung, you're going to have chest discomfort, too. Uh, when they did angiography, they did some tests on him. They, they showed he had a clot in both his left and right uh, pulmonary artery branches. 
Uh, he, the, he had no family history of venous thromboembolism. In other words, nobody's family had ever had any kind of pulmonary embolism or clotting problem. Uh, and there was nothing like that. So the question is, uh, the rest of his tests seem pretty normal, uh, except uh, he, he was uh, he exercised in the gym uh, for uh, for the, he's been exercising for at least five years, and he his workouts last three hours a day, and uh, uh, right before he uh, reported to the emergency room, he decided that he had heard that creatine helps build muscle, so he decided to increase his creatine dose. Now the normal dose of creatine is three to five grams a day. Uh, but when you're on a creatine load, they call it, in other words, to initially load the muscles, uh, some people will go on this creatine load where they ingest 5 grams, 5 to 6 times a day, so they're getting 25 to 30 grams a day. Now, that only is done for 5 to 6 days at most. After that, you're supposed to go on a maintenance dose of, again, 3 to 5 grams a day. This guy took it upon himself to take 20 grams a day for, for quite a while, and he was also working out uh, very hard in the gym. Apparently, the gym uh, was uh, very warm. Uh, he didn't drink enough fluid. And uh, apparently, he, uh, he got dehydrated. Now, so, so what these researchers are saying is that the reason that, the, the reason that they're connecting the creatine to his pulmonary embolism is because his excessive sweating and the gym caused him to become dehydrated. The dehydration uh, caused uh, his blood, blood viscosity. In other words, his blood got thicker. And when your blood gets thicker, there's an increased chance of a clot formation. So the increased viscosity of the blood or thickness of the blood caused by his de dehydration uh, uh, was amplified by his uh, larger intake of creatine so he wound up with a pulmonary embolism. Uh, again, this is totally speculation. Uh, now, I will say, however, that it is an outside possibility that if you let yourself get that dehydrated, not consume any fluids, worked out for a couple of hours to the point where you got dehydrated, let's say it's a hot environment, and you, you are taking, let's say, 20 grams a day or more of creatine, there is a chance that you're going to get increased uh uh, your blood will get thicker. You're getting increased viscosity. And there is an outside chance that you could throw a clot through the lungs, a pulmonary em embolism. But the point being, as long as you're drinking enough fluids, and you'd, you'd always drink fluids when you take creatine. Always. Because, again, creatine causes the, uh, your, your uh, body water to, to be go into the cells, basically. In other words, it increases intracellular water. And this has a slight dehydration effect, not to the point of causing any problems. In fact, it's actually good because uh, that, that intracellular hydration is associated with anabolic effects. They call it cellular swelling. However, if, you, uh, if you're dehydrated, on, if, let's say you're not drinking enough fluids, and you're already dehydrated, then taking a lot of uh, creatine, again, could add to the problem and cause problems. So that's a unique situation. It's not very common. And again, it's easily, the reason why you don't see a lot of studies like this is that it just doesn't, hasn't happened. It happened to this one guy. And even, even in this case, they can't sh show cause and effect. They can't definitively show that his use of creatine caused his venous, uh, I mean, his uh, pulmonary embolism. It could have just been caused by extreme dehydration alone, which, which as, as I said earlier, will increase blood viscosity or thickness and any time you have increased blood viscosity to a certain point, there's always a danger of increased clotting. Uh, you can get a clot to the brain, it can cause a stroke. Or you can get a clot to the lungs, it can cause a pulmonary embolism. As a matter of fact, one of the problems with testosterone replacement therapy, a lot of men over 40, when they initially start testosterone therapy, if they're taking a, a testosterone uh, injection that's greater than 150 milligrams a week, 50% of them tend to get what they call elevated hematocrit. Hematocrit is a measure of blood viscosity, how thick your blood is. The problem with that, again, is an elevated hematocrit up to past a certain point increases your risk of having a stroke. Uh, the usual treatment for an elevated hematocrit is to, uh, is to, uh, uh, is to, uh, is to donate blood. Uh, as soon as you uh, donate blood, your hematocrit comes down and everything's fine. 
However, uh, recent studies show, which is very interesting, uh, it, it, after about six months of continuous uh, testosterone therapy, even at 150 milligrams or more, the danger of elevated hematocrit goes down to nothing. In other words, it doesn't. Uh, y- your body somehow kind of conditions itself or gets used to it, and uh, I'm sure certain uh, things are downgraded, uh, such as something called hepcidin, which is uh, w- which has to do with uh, absorption of iron. Uh, when you take uh, when you take testosterone, it increases hepcidin, so you get increased iron uptake, and the iron uptake in, in turn stimulates the production of erythrocytes, red blood cells, which in turn cause can can increase your hematocrit. Uh, and um, my theory is that uh, after a couple of months of testosterone replacement therapy, your body senses the extra testosterone, and it downgrades the hepcidin. So you don't absorb uh, greater amounts of iron, and that leads to a normal hematocrit level. That's only my theory, but they have shown that in a couple of more recent studies. So that's about all I could say about this is that uh, it's an interesting thing. The uh, lesson, the take-home lesson here is very simple. When you're taking a creatine supplement, ensure that you drink fluids. Never take creatine when when you're purposely dehydrating yourself. Uh, if for, if for some reason you're restricting water, uh, maybe you're training for a contest and you think that restricting water will make you more muscularly defined, which, by the way, it won't. The more water you restrict, the more water your body holds because it always wants to maintain a certain amount of water balance. So if you're not drinking enough fluids, it will cause you to retain stuff like sodium and other things that will cause you to retain any fluid, even fluid from food, will be retained in the body. And so so the less fluid you drink, the more water you retain. This idea of restricting fluid to get more cut is nonsense. If it, so many bodybuilders, oh man, there's so many myths believed by bodybuilders. Oh my God, this stuff about the egg whites, oh God. Uh, it's, it's pathetic, it's all I could say, pathetic. And the, you know, the, the really sad part is, this stuff is not innocu- innocuous. The, the, the beliefs that some bodybuilders have, like restricting fluid or eating only egg whites and throwing out the yolks and this stuff and that, they're not innocuous. They can be hazardous to health. Uh, you know, the idea that any amount of steroids is not going to hurt you, uh, the idea that you take thyroid uh, drugs and not have uh, heart problems or clenbuterol won't cause side. Uh, this is this is not just stupid, but it could be deadly. So, uh there's an old saying, knowledge is power. And you know, you know, that's one of the reasons why I published my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Because I give 100% truthful information uh, you will, where you will learn what works and what doesn't work. And you can save yourself a lot of grief and also spare your, heart, your health. Because I explored a lot of the myths related to drugs and supplements in my Applied Metabolics, which is www.appliedmetabolics.com. So, again, getting back to this topic, don't restrict fluids when you're taking creatine and you'll be fine. You won't, if you have any type of pulmonary embolism, it's more likely related to some sort of genetic clotting abnormality that is totally unrelated to creatine. So, I'll leave it with that. Uh, again, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, ergogenic AIDS, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research you could use today, effective fat loss techniques, women's health and fitness, uh, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, there's no digital publication that I know of in existence that can match the depth of material in Applied Metabolics. Ask anyone who subscribes and they will confirm that. I put a lot of work into it. It's 30 to 50 pages every month. No ads. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I, I don't advocate any supplements or no brands or anything like that. It's just pure information. It's something I wish I had when I was involved in bodybuilding. It could have saved me a lot of grief because I do impart the knowledge I have of six decades of being involved in bodybuilding is, is, is in the Applied Metabolics newsletter. It could save you a lot of grief and a lot of pro- uh, problems that could crop up in your training and your diet. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join, to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page. Well, each day I post new, inform, uh, new, new information on, egg, on exercise, science, nutrition, and general medicine. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage by, where current subscribers only, I don't accept unsolicited questions, 
can send me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or anything that comes to mind, and I'll be happy to answer because I appreciate the fact that they are supporting my work by subscribing to Applied Metabolics. And uh, what else can I say? Uh, that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, uh, adopt a dog, 